The director of Iran's nuclear energy agency says the country has the right to gradually downgrade commitments made under the 2015 nuclear deal. The US has ramped up sanctions on Iran after withdrawing from the deal last year. Tehran blames Europe for not doing more to allow it access to foreign trade since those sanctions came into effect. FSN's William Denzelow reports from Brussels. After meeting the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, the director of Iran's nuclear energy agency accused the European Union of failing to act on its promises. Ali Akbar Salehi said Europe should have filled the void created by US sanctions, but had failed to restore Iran's access to foreign trade. The comments come after Iran announced Saturday it had further breached nuclear limits set under the landmark 2015 nuclear deal. France has been a leading nation trying to keep the deal alive. The country's foreign minister says these latest developments are negative, but not definitive. William Denslow, Brussels. UK lawmakers will vote again later on whether there should be a snap election. MPs are expected to defeat the government because opposition parties want to ensure a no-deal Brexit is avoided before approving an early poll. Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been meeting his Irish counterpart Leo Varadkar in Dublin for Brexit talks. It comes as Mr Johnson's administration tries to find a way round legislation designed to avert a no-deal Brexit by delaying the process beyond October the 31st. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. This is the story of a very special woman. Just a few knew about her superpowers. In a matter of seconds, she turned herself into a great mathematician. She masqueraded as a regular person at work, but as a superhero at home. Everyone knows her as Gabriella. I still call her Mom. Your hero needs you now. And AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need to help, complete with tips and resources, at aarp.org caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Council. This is a test of the emergency podcast system. Activated by contract termination. Rumors of our demise are greatly exaggerated. Welcome to Stacy on the Right with your host, Stacy Washington. She's blessed to be a Bible-reading, gun-toting, Air Force veteran, wife and mom, righteously American. <laughs> All right. I'm here. It's Monday. And I made it. Yeah, so the weekend was so relaxing that I think I may have actually, I may have overdid it. I may have overdone it just a tad. And uh, that's okay. That's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, really fine with um, having mainly just a, a kind of easing on into Monday, if you will. So much going on, so much uh, going on in in our in our personal lives. We have so many things, like so many moving parts, and sometimes it just takes you just need a minute to just sit down um, and decompress. Just let some of it eke on out. So what I've done is um, really loose, easygoing show today, um, but we're also going to dig dig into a few things, and I want to start off with. Um, this is over at Don Serber, who he's, I love reading his work every day. Like I've, he's my new favorite place to go for cool content. And of course, I think one of the things that is, is really fun about just reading his work is that he's so often, he's not just right there where the news is, he's ahead of the curve as well. So he'll have something that's maybe, I don't know, um, even feels like he's a little predictive where he's talking about what's going on, but he's also predicting some of what we're going to see in the way of how Americans are absorbing or taking in the news as it comes to us. So um, I want to bring in this story. Uh, first of all, a bunch of Republicans have retired. And uh, so it's it's almost like the last time when it was the midterms and they all and a ton of them retired and then it impacted our control of the House. It's somewhat similar to that, and and um, 
even Wayne Dupree over at WayneDupree.com has been talking about how there's uh, looks like they're trying to set him up for impeachment by retiring. Now, we all know what we can do, which is first, we believe that God has what's best for us. We know that's the truth. And then we pray and then we act, which is we go out and we vote. But we, we need these people. And I don't understand why they're why they're retiring. All of them are deciding to, to jump out now. So here we are. The president tweeted out House Republicans should allow chairs of committees to remain for longer than six years. Um, It forces great people, real leaders to leave after serving. The Dems have unlimited terms. And while that has its own problems, it's a better way to go. Fewer people in the end will leave. Now, term limits might be something that kind of forces the right people to leave, but it's also going to be a much more preventative cure for people who just go in there and they settle in like they're, you know, sitting on eggs and they just just keep warming those eggs, whether the eggs are rotten and decrepit and, you know, whether there are any eggs there at all, they're just sitting there like hens and they're hoarding the power and they're really excited about being in office and having those committee chairmanships. But there's a wave of retirements by GOP members of Congress and President Trump is calling for Republican lawmakers to make a change in the House, change their rules so that people can stay on longer. So this does go a little bit against the whole ethos of draining the swamp because draining the swamp means people who've been there too long who stink they're rotting their power has long since eaten away at any of their uh you know kind of normal sensibilities as americans and now they're kind of just sitting there and we want to get away from that so we do need term limits on members of congress um and i I think as opposed to that we should look at the people who are retiring and kind of examine their motives and then kind of just say, you know, if if anything is happening that is really, really, I don't know, important, um, that we can look at the people and see it as it's it's a mixed blessing, right? If they're leaving and we're seeing them leave and we're seeing that as, well, that's a negative, we have to be looking at who we can replace them with and turn lemon, lemons, if you will, into lemonade. Some of these people have been there a long time. Some of them are going to be missed. It's a mixed bag. I understand what the president is saying, but I tend to disagree on um, anytime you say, let's do something like what the Democrats are doing. I find that to be a little suspect because it, it, it can literally be that what the Democrats are doing is wrong and it may look right in the short term, but in the long term, it would hurt us because we're about principles. We're about standing by what we believe, standing for what's right and for doing things the hard way, if it's the right way, the right way, whether or not it's the hard way, even if it's the easy way, if it's the right way, right? So it should be that doing what's right should be primary for us. And so that takes me over to um, kind of some good news, which we can all use on a Monday, right? And that is the Breitbart News is reporting that more than 6.2 million individuals have dropped off of food stamps since President Donald Trump completed his first full month in office. Now, what's exciting about that is that, um, you know, these are people, they're real people. These numbers represent real people who now have jobs, who now um, who now are looking at just being able to do whatever they want. And, and I know that that might sound like, you know, what kids say, what are you going to do? Whatever I want. Kids love saying that. And I, I actually like saying that, too, when especially when uh, I find out someone's you know, challenging me on something that is really within my own purview. And they're basically trying to boss me around as a grown woman. I like to say whatever I want, because it's really not up to you. It's not your choice. But in this case, I'm talking about the the change in a person's outlook when they go from having really just paycheck to paycheck, dire straits, the kind of feelings that are attenuated by not having an upward trajectory in your work environment. And upward trajectory, I'm just meaning that you know you're doing a good job there, you're getting a paycheck, and you may even be setting yourself up for some promotional opportunities. That's what I mean by that. So it doesn't mean that you're up to be the CEO in you know a year or some, uh, some outrageous accomplishment. It just means you're looking at your future and you're saying, I got this steady income now where before I was receiving some assistance and I was just, I I didn't have what I needed. We were paycheck to paycheck or we didn't have paychecks. We were just 
temping and you know day jobbing it and what have you and now we have steady work we have health insurance now we're starting to make a dent in things now we've made a list of the things that we need to pay off and we're going to hit those really hard now we're in a place where we can actually make a huge difference in not just our lives in our immediate family but that the immediate family is going to flourish so that eventually there's going to be some overflow and that's these people. And we're, this is not an insignificant number of people. Breitbart News says that more than 6.2 million individuals have dropped off of food stamps since Pre- President Donald Trump completed his first full month in office. And this is according to the latest data from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The most recent USDA data shows we're talking 6,268,285 individuals who are no longer on food stamps. There's a huge shift that happens when you're no longer using a government card to get your food when you're buying your own food and there are no limits on what you can buy what items you can you know purchase with with that money you're paying for your own food you're no longer getting money from the government it's awesome it's uh, it's utterly awesome so when i look at it that way i'm thinking to myself well okay um this this looks and sounds fantastic but how exactly can we go from like go from there to even more people, well, it's the jobs, it's the reduction in regulations, it's the booming economy. We have so many openings that people from foreign countries are coming here and taking advantage of it, then you know Americans have a better opportunity than ever before, and in in that is prosperity. It's maybe future, because if you're just getting back to work, you're not talking prosperity right away, but you do have a huge opportunity to improve your life. So this is Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, which is the program that's in charge of food stamps. And since February of 2017, when President finished his first month uh, as president, a reduction of over 6.2 million people receiving that. Individual and household food stamp participation has consistently declined since 2013, back when the Obama administration was in power and enrollment in the program reached its highest point in U.S. history, which is why President Obama had the nickname food stamp president. That's why, because people literally were looking at the way it was, um, how many people were receiving benefits, and they were just saying, geez, geez, Lou, this is just kind of unbelievable. People are truly... um, Everybody's on food stamps, right? So now they're off, 6.2 million people. And Washington has to be looking at this, and there's only two reactions you can have. You can say, oh, yay, more people experiencing not just freedom, but economic liberty, meaning they're in control of their destiny because no government agency is putting money into their, their pocket. But there's also people who would look at that and say, well, we don't want more Americans off food stamps. We want people to feel like they can access their government services. We want more people on food stamps. We've heard Democrats say this. And if you couple that with their strong desire to have a, um, you know, a, a recession, then you can tell that they don't have anyone's best interests at heart. They actually do not want Americans to be self-sufficient and able to care for themselves. They would prefer to see more Americans shackled to the government and unable to do what what is really just the most basic of things like making enough money to buy your own food, making enough money to pay your own way, your rent, your, your, all of your necessities paid for out of your own household or to have extended family where if there is a little bit of a shortfall, you go to family first as opposed to just bellying up to the first government program you can get your hands on. Because what's so interesting about these government agencies when you go there, what they have is they have this, it's this, this way of doing things where they say to you, um, so here's all the stuff you qualify for. So you might have just gone in thinking, you know, I've lost my job, I need some, um, you know, unemployment insurance. But when you're there, they'll say, well, do you have kids? Well, do you have this? Do you have that? And depending on what you have, they're going to give you everything that you're eligible for. And once you start receiving those things, the temptation to work less because you now have this extra coming in or maybe not to go back to work as soon as you can. It, it's human nature. Wherever you're getting something from and it's free, it changes your behavior. So anyway, I've just blown right through our natural break because I'm kind of running things manually today. So we're going to go to the break. And when we get back, we are going to be talking about more um, more news of the day, more Stacy on the right. Go to StaceyOnTheRight.com and hit the subscribe button. Um, We'll be right back. Well, it's the best. 
basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling on it. <laughs> the dad joke. Corny, grown worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. If you love them enough to listen to them practice the same song on tuba, please be done. Over and over and over and over and over. Then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Sounds good, honey. Check today at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Act Council. Hope you enjoyed your meal. And I just want to say, he's lucky to have a brother like you. Lucky? Caring for my brother is far from easy. But he's a part of me, like my arms and legs, so I'll be his. No time for tired. Nothing can disable this love. He needs me. But I'm the lucky one, even though I need help now and then. If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org caregiving for care guides and community. Support for your strength. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Man, I love my kids so much. I once sat for three hours in the cold rain to watch her soccer team lose by 18 goals. I love my kids so much, I once used a tube to suck snot out of her stuffed nose at 3 a.m. You win. Love your kids? Love them enough to make sure they're in the right car seat. From toddlers to tweens, visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to find the right seat for your age and son. Welcome back to program. So, um, ton of I want to go what into. What if the, I could tell you that a full blown wildfire was going I'm to occur sure tomorrow, going right here. where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. All right. <laughs> Um, this is what happens when I'm writing the show manually. I've got all kinds of stuff going on um, that shouldn't be going on at the same time. But welcome back. Um, so I wanted to head over to the chats, different chats that we have going on on Facebook. I wanted to say hi to Margaret and Kenneth, Jason, Alan, um, Ellen, a bunch of fun people on there, Jake, Connie, Carolyn, thank you so much for being into the chat room. And then over on YouTube, Angie, Merle, thank you so much for being on YouTube. And then um, I don't actually see who goes into the live stream when we're talking about the um, Periscope. Like I'd have to click through and see who all's in there. Um, so I wanted to also give a quick update. Um, if you watched or not watched, but listened to the live stream, well, we had, we basically, we didn't have a live stream. We didn't have a YouTube video of the interview with Dr. Williams. Now, remember, he's where he lives and I'm where I live. So if we had had a live stream, you would have only been looking at me, but we weren't able to do a live stream because we had to accommodate his schedule for when he was available to do the interview. So the interview is podcast only. And if you wanna hear the chat that I had with, with Dr. Williams, it's there, it's episode 546. And it's at listen.stacyontheright.com. Just like that sounds, listen.stacyontheright.com. So that's where you can find that and listen to the interview. There is no video. And if there was, you wouldn't be looking at Dr. Williams. So you're just hearing the interview with him. It was a phone interview as all of my interviews are. And it was fantastic. And I think you should listen to it, but that's the only option that you have. So if you're looking for that on YouTube or someplace else, it's not there because I didn't have a video capability for uh, for Friday at the time that we had that interview. Um, so we just talked about the um, the people who are coming off of food stamps 
And I, I, I just have to say, it's super exciting for them, and, but we're also having other news. And I was going over this with um, my husband and, and, well, one of the kids, the kid who's still here, um, over the weekend, because this is something that we're finding. So first off, it's vaping. And you might want to check with your kids and ask them if they know any kids at school who are, basically you sneak the vaping devices into the school and in between classes, girls will go in the bathroom and there'll be a bunch of them that are sharing the same one or two little vaping uh, e-cigs and they'll vape in the bathroom in between classes and then go back to, you know, go to their next class. This was going on at one of the schools that we, so we know a lot of kids who, some of them are at my kids' schools and then some of them, you know, you know parents whose kids are at other schools and they've been talking about this happening. And so we were talking to the kids about that well, now this new phenomenon that's going on has been reports over the last week, and I wanted to kind of wait it out just a couple of days to see what they were going to come up with. And right now, there's they can't figure out what's going on. It's a severe and public, puzzling lung disease linked to electronic cigarettes and other vaping devices, and doctors across the country don't know what's going on. They're, they're scrambling to diagnose and care for patients who are struggling to breathe. Now, on Friday, the CDC actually issued, they, they numbered the vaping-related illnesses at 450 cases in 33 states. It's directly connected to using e-cigarettes, especially those that are purchased off the street from people who are just basically, you know, and, and again, I know it's one thing to go to your neighbor, you know, you're walking up and down your street or something and your neighbor has a lemonade stand, well, you probably are going to be okay purchasing lemonade from the lemonade stand of your neighbor, right? But if you're just walking down a major, a street of a major city or even a, a little city and some dude is selling e-cigs, something that you're going to inhale into your body, why would you buy e-cigs from some stranger instead of buying them from a store where you could at least hold them accountable later? How do you find that guy again if you vape the e-cig and then you get sick? How do you find that guy? Where, where do you go to find him? Oh, that's right. You can't because you bought it off of him just straight off the street. So let's exercise some common sense. But the reason why there's maybe not as much common sense here as maybe is required is some of the people who are purchasing these e-cigs off the street, they're kids, they're underage. So that's why they're buying them from these dudes off the street. Now, 450 cases in 33 states, respiratory illness, as of Friday, five people have died. So they're not just cases or data points. They're individuals. They're suffering. They cannot breathe. In uh, health officials in California, Indiana, Minnesota, each announced one death on Friday. The Minnesota Department of Health said the patient who died in their state was over 65. An investigation re revealed that the cause of death was linked to vaping illicit products containing THC the psychoactive compound in marijuana. Again, that's that's the, that's what we're up to. You got nothing else to do but try to get marijuana into vaping. Look, you're taking your own life into your own hands. So there's the caution for you. Um, in California, an unidentified patient older than 55 was felled by the mysterious disease after using a vaping de device to consume THC. That's in uh, Los Angeles County. Out of the 12 cases of illness linked to vaping this summer in the nation's second largest city, only one did not involve a cannabis product. Two deaths in Oregon and Illinois uh, also are under investigation. Now there are new recommendations from the CDC that people stay away from vaping devices while investigators work to pinpoint exactly what's behind the illnesses. So the CDC is saying just don't vape right because they can't figure out if it's something that's been laced in just the THC additives or if it's something that's unique to a specific cartridge or if it's a specific flavor or a specific vendor they don't know so the less they know the more imperative it is that you basically just say I'm I'm out I'm not doing this I'm not going to participate in this until they figure out what's going on so so far the FDA has tested 120 product samples and have been unable to identify any one brand, ingredient, or substance that could explain the illnesses. 
The FDA lab is currently scouring the products for a broad range of chemicals, which include nicotine, THC, additives, pesticides, opioids, poisons, and toxins. While the investigation continues, officials urge consumers to steer clear of potentially counterfeit products. If you're thinking, and let me give this quote, this is Mitch Zeller, who's the director of the FDA's Center for Tobacco Products. He had a press call with reporters, and this is the quote from him. If you're thinking of purchasing one of these products off the street, out of the back of a car, out of a truck, in an alley, or if you're going to then go home and make modifications to the product itself, using something that you purchased from some third party or got from a friend, think twice. Again, think twice. Now that doctors in multiple states in the Virgin Islands, which has reported one case, have had a chance to compare notes, they're finding similarities. Basically, after the illness is inside you, you start to feel pretty lousy for a few days. Then you go to the doctor and they misdiagnose you with bronchitis or a viral illness, which means they're gonna tell you to take some over-the-counter and go home. When treatments for those conditions fail, the symptoms worsen to the point where they're having trouble breathing, forcing patients to seek help in an emergency department. Oh, wow. So patients are experiencing shortness of breath, fever, cough, fatigue, nausea, and vomiting. All said they'd recently vaped either THC, nicotine, or a combination thereof. The same symptoms have shown up in 53 patients in Illinois, where the majority have been otherwise healthy, relatively young men. All patients had abnormalities seen in imaging apparent in both lungs. Uh, so health officials in the Wisconsin Department of Health Services published their findings about vaping-related cases in the New England Journal of Medicine on Friday. Illinois has reported 53 either confirmed or possible cases. Wisconsin has reported 34. So misdiagnosis is pretty common. 72% of the patients who'd been hospitalized after vaping had been previously seen by a doctor for their symptoms. By the time they were hospitalized, more than half of them needed to be placed in intensive care and a third of them were placed on ventilators. Oh, wow. So doctors are recommending that if you vape, you should seek medical help if you start to develop symptoms. If you have the following symptoms, immediately go and seek help and tell them that you've been vaping. The symptoms that you're looking for are shortness of breath, cough, fever, chest pain, extreme fatigue, vomiting, or diarrhea. Now, I know that a lot of people who are using e-cigs are using them because they were previously addicted to uh, nicotine from cigarettes. And so they're trying to get rid of cigarettes and they're basically trying to transition off of that by using these e-cigs. Well, I don't know if it's... Uh, it's going to be a good way. And they're saying that if you're trying to use it to get off of nicotine, it's just an alternative way to deliver nicotine. So you're really not going to be stepping down from regular cigarettes using e cigs So, you know, the, it's, it's, not, it's not going to help. Now, I've seen stories of people posting online that this has helped them to stop smoking cigarettes. But the question is, are you still vaping? Like, do you have to vape? Because if you're addicted to vaping, no longer addicted to cigarettes, then you've just replaced one thing with another. So the New York State Department of Health said lab tests showed extremely high levels of vitamin E acetate in nearly all of the analyzed samples of products that contained cannabis. Vitamin E acetate was not found in the nicotine products that were tested. Now this compound is a commonly available nutritional supplement that is not known to be harmful when taken as a vitamin or applied to skin. But they're not sure what happens when it's inhaled. So um, you can also go to safetyreporting.hhs.gov, safetyreporting.hhs.gov. And if you head over there, you can find some interesting information. You can also report if you've been a part of this recent spate of, of vaping illnesses so that they can keep better count on what exactly is going on. Um, again, I, I don't, so for me, it's not an issue of, like I, I would never vape. I'm hoping that our kids never vape. But I also know that there are people out there who are vaping and using, um, using these e-cigs. And so what my hope is that you'll, first of all, maybe take a break from it while this is going on until they figure out what it is and get a treatment protocol together for people so that, you know, they're not being sent home and waiting until the illness is so bad that they have to be put on ventilators. And then second of all, 
we need to reevaluate the safety of, of this item. And then in the end, whether or not it's deemed safe, it has to be a personal responsibility type of a choice. Do you need to vape? Is it something that you absolutely must do? If it's something you're doing for recreation, can't you find anything else to do? This sounds like it's really hazardous to the health of, of Americans and we shouldn't be uh, we shouldn't be participating. That's, that's what I'm saying. So now I want to pivot over to Google. They are facing a new antitrust probe by 50's, 50 attorneys general. So Texas is going to lead a joint state investigation into Google over antitrust concerns. And this was announced by Attorney General Ken Paxton on Monday. So today. The news follows the announcement of a joint state Facebook probe led by the Attorney General of New York. Google is also reportedly facing an antitrust probe from the U.S. Department of Justice. Now, what's interesting about this is uh, they could easily not have these problems if they would just shore up their safety, you know, so basically the safety protocols that they have around information security you know, stop, stop spying on people. Um, you know, so basically stop acting like a big old internet bully. Stop suppressing conservative content. So all the stuff that people have been complaining about, if they just basically went through the company and said, we're revamping this thing, we're not going to do these things anymore because they're anti-American, there wouldn't be a need for 50 states attorneys general to probe into them. But there is a need because of the way they've behaved. Uh, so the links to this will be at listen.stacyontheright.com. Um, We're going to head off into the break. And so we'll have more Stacey on the right after these messages. I'm your host, Smokey Cole Bear. Filling in for Smokey, because after 75 years of... Only you can prevent wildfires. Turns out there's much more to say. Nearly 90% of wildfires are caused by us humans being careless. Dumping our used barbecue coals willy-nilly. Guess the song was wrong. We did start the fire. That's why I respect Mother Nature and her trees, whether coniferous or new car scented. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Okay, forest animals, kids are coming to the forest, and it's up to us to make their visit a good one. Sparrow, have you practiced the most popular bird songs for the year? Of course. Catchy. I like it. River, how's the temperature? It's a refreshing 52 degrees, man. I love it. Uh, Turtle. He's not here yet, man. Uh, He's late every morning. Okay. Squirrel. The forest has been preparing just for you. To learn more about cool things to do in the forest, visit discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. My mother was always very active and independent, and she was familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. She wasn't even really sure where she was at. It's important for you to talk to someone about it. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, we'll figure it out. When something feels different, it could be Alzheimer's. Now is the time to talk. Visit alz.org slash ourstories to learn more. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. The average time a resume spends on an HR manager's desk is seven seconds, and most of them are tossed aside. Now imagine if one of those resumes belonged to Yasmin, who was... Living in a shelter, juggling three jobs. I had to be resilient. That's something that you can't teach. We rely so much on a resume, yet it could never tell the full story of someone who... Had to be independent and take initiative, and that's how I handle every project I get. Discover new ways to develop great talent at gradsoflife.org. Brought to you by Grads of Life and the Ad Council. When is the best time to talk to your family about staying in touch during a disaster? When floodwaters reach your door? When wildfires are engulfing the edge of your neighborhood? Or an earthquake is destroying buildings? Or is the best time, perhaps, today? During a disaster, you may not be able to stay in touch with your family or friends as easily as you think. Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Hi, it's Olivia Munn with my shelter pets, Frankie and Chance. Say hi, guys. 
When I adopted them, I discovered that they both have incredible personalities. Chance's sole purpose in life is to love and to be loved. Frankie is a little bit of a scoundrel and always entertaining. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the Humane Society of the United States, and Maddie's Fund. If you love them enough to turn off your music and pretend like their music is your music. Ah, oh, this is mommy's jam. Then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Let's play it again. Check today at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Act Council. Welcome back to Spacey on the Right. Hey, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for being here today. Don't forget to share the podcast. That is the main reason we're slamming and jamming over here, enjoying ourselves. And we are really excited about um, the podcast numbers and we want them to continue to grow. So don't forget to tell people, listen to Uh So, you know, we're looking at China's exports. They just fell precipitously. We kind of mentioned that before, but I want to give you the highlights. Um, it's actually great news the trade war with the united states has continued to hit the world's second largest economy right in the tuchus they are not enjoying donald trump basically holding them accountable and making them answer for their unfair trade practices um shipments fell by one percent in the month after growing 3.3 percent in july in dollar terms and below the 2.1 percent growth expected by analysts in a bloomberg poll imports in the month dropped by 5.6 percent leaving a trade surplus of 34.84 billion according to china's general administration of customs july's expansion now seems like an anomaly likely driven by front loading as new tariffs of 15 percent on the uh, on about 110 billion of chinese goods that took effect on september 1st american buyers of chinese goods subject to the new tariffs were likely to have filled their inventories as much as possible before the goods became more expensive to import so basically people kind of basic pre-purchasing they know they're going to have some demand in the next month they're just trying to offset the impact of the tariffs so there's no real growth there it's just people trying to take advantage before they find another supplier for this newly expensive item the bbc reported that chinese exports to europe south korea australia and southeast asia also worsened on an annual basis compared with july the red Chinese are running out of lipstick to put on their pick of an economy. <laughs> you got to love Don Serber. So they're hooked on exports and President Trump is exports anonymous. He's not having it. OK, I love that. Um, so you might have also seen this is one that's making the rounds and not to, to toot my own horn, but here it comes incoming. We interviewed this guy a year and a half ago, maybe even close to two years ago, we had this guy, Epstein. His name's Dr. Robert Epstein, and he was on the Stacey on the Right show way back when at the other place. He came on the program to talk about Google's bias in the 2016 election and how they manipulated voters to Hillary Clinton's favor, possibly 800,000 votes. And Epstein, he was on Life, Liberty, and Levin, and he said the study looked into politically oriented searches from a diverse group of American voters. He went on to say that the level of bias was sufficient. I calculated to have shifted over time somewhere between 2.6 and 10.4 million votes to Hillary without anyone knowing that this has occurred. Now, just one second here. If that's true, doesn't this mean that not only did she not win the Electoral College, but she got spanked? that President Trump did win bigger than any other president in the known history of elections. We have no reason to doubt these results. When Epstein came on my show, he was utterly credible. In fact, I was making a comment about something that had to do with this story, uh, something to the effect that leftists were, you know, basically stealing elections. And he said, you know, full disclosure, I voted for Hillary Clinton and I consider myself to be a Democrat. And I was taken aback. I was like, oh, so he said, but that doesn't change the fact that 
they're cheating and they're actually harming our what he he called it a democracy we don't have a democracy by the way we have a representative republic um but anyway that's the story can you believe this can you actually like get your mind wrapped around the fact that google did not trust hillary clinton to win and so they shifted votes in her favor and they still lost so it wasn't a close election so it means that President Trump could actually win by a whole ton, except if they did it last time, what do you think they're doing now? What do you think they're doing now? Why do you think the traffic is so low on certain blogs and so extraordinarily high on the lefty sites? And they're still shutting stuff down. Did you hear? Think Progress, the blog is shutting down. And it is a blog that had amazing funding, an outstanding level of uh, income from leftist groups and George Soros, and they're still shutting it down. The Center for American Progress is shutting down Think Progress, the blog. Their blog had somewhere between four and five times the amount of funding that a lot of right wing, as they call it, right leaning organizations have that are still open and putting out content and, you know, research and everything else. So, you know, you cheat, you lose. You may not lose right away, but it's going to come back on you. So even after spending billions of dollars this year, the federal government is running out of, guess what, to care for the thousands of illegal aliens who are crossing the U.S.-Mexico border. They're actually going to now divert funds from Head Start and Alzheimer's and cancer research. They're going to divert those funds to care for people who are not Americans. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar has had to divert $831 million to cover a funding gap. Those funds for illegal alien families were transferred from HHS programs designed to help Americans, including Head Start, CDC, pre uh, prevention initiatives for the CDC, cancer prevention, and Alzheimer's care. Illegal aliens are actually beginning to bankrupt our country. And the idea that we're supposed to be happy about it, as the Democratic candidates have said, it doesn't make any sense. And I, and I just want to make it clear here. I don't believe that it's just that. Like whatever we're looking at here, and apparently there's a new book out by Michelle Malkin where she's done research into this, but I don't believe it's just those programs. I believe it's so much more. The ripple effect can be seen all over the country where we're literally seeing like it just take K through 12 public education. If you have a whole bunch of students that you can't turn away because you have to educate any kid who shows up at your door who has proof of residency and you have other programs that you've been using, talented and gifted programs, art programs, um, literacy programs for kids who are falling below the proficiency level, just you name it, all the different extras that parents pay extra money for a house to live in a school district because it has the laptop carts and you know has access to technology smart boards etc all the money that parents raise to put into putting extra things in the, stu the school buildings where their kids go to school and then they have their funding cut for programs that are supposed to be paid for because they're a part of their tax base and that's because their enrollment is expanding because there's all these extra kids there who are in the country illegally or they're anchor babies and their parents are in the country illegally. There's an impact and the impact continues to spread. It's not something that we're going to say, oh, you know, it's not a big deal. Nothing really is going on. Um, no, it is having an impact whether we're going to accept it or not. So, hmm. Now let's turn over to this report by Newsbusters. So some analyst on CNN made this huge statement about the NFL. So it's Saturday afternoon and CNN was following up their Friday hosts gushing over the NFL's Ryan Russell coming out as a bisexual by continuing to do their part to promote gay rights. So CNN sports analyst Christine Brennan predicted the NFL must encourage more gays to come out so that it can be viable in the future. Because what you need on a good NFL team, last that I checked, because you know I don't know anything about football except that it's a game that's played here in this country and it's super popular. I know about touchdowns and field goals, but I mean, I'm certainly no expert. But what does having someone who's an openly homosexual person, what kind of joy does that add to the game? What, what kind of skill or prowess does that add to the game? How does that make the game 
more interesting, better to watch, increase advertising revenue? How does it get more people to buy season tickets? How does it get more people to buy NFL apparel or other items that are endorsed by NFL players? I can tell you right now, it doesn't. NFL is a sport for manly men. It's a sport for men. Plenty of women enjoy it, but it's for men. We know it. Anybody who says otherwise is just lying to themselves. And men are not particularly interested in hearing about the sexual orientation of people who aren't heterosexuals. We know this. It, to deny it is to be an utter ball-faced liar. And it's just time we stopped entertaining these kinds of ideas. But of course, what am I saying? This was CNN. So you got CNN Newsroom, Weekend Anchor, Anna Cabrera, proclaiming that Russell had made a bold move by announcing his sexuality as she set up a clip of his interview with CNN's New Day show from Friday. Then Cabrera brings this woman, uh, Brennan, she brings her aboard. She's also a sports columnist for USA Today. And she declared that it is a big deal because the NFL is a reflection of our culture. And she also alluded to Colin... Kaepernick using NFL games to protest and called Russell's move an important first step. So let's say a ton of NFL players come out as gay. That's not going to bring in more dollars. It's not going to bring in more revenue. But more than that, it they act as if this is some positive cultural phenomenon. It's not. There's nothing positive about this. People who watch football, people who enjoy football, people who really, they don't want to have any of this social issue stuff having anything to do with football, they're not going to be drawn to it because of this. And there are lots of Americans, millions of Americans who stepped away from the NFL during the Colin Kaepernick thing. So the last thing the NFL needs is to engage in more social justice warrioring. It's the last thing they need to do. Um, and and I, I, I'm going to be honest, I, I'm kind of surprised, that, but this is CNN. And this is what they have to share with us. Out of all the things that they could be sharing with us as Americans, that's what they choose to do. So, uh, all right. There's a few people who are actually challenging the president. Um, so according to OpsLens, you know, they have their Monday morning briefing. The GOP in Kansas, Nevada, and South Carolina have cast their lot with the president and canceled their presidential primary contests. <laughs> Yes, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Let's have some of these organizations actually support the president. Okay, that's, I mean, this is what this is the way it's supposed to work. So all of their nomination support will go to President Trump, which is bad news for Bill Weld, Joe Walsh, and Mark Sanford. Isn't that a group of winners? Sorry, no, I'm not. I'm not actually sorry. Sorry about that. Um, so the most pressing problems with the president, according to those three, are that the president is mean. You heard me. He's mean and upsetting. Um, so moving on, you're wondering what's going on in California? Well, there's this viral video down on, um, where is it? It's, it's well, you can find it at waynedupree.com. It's making the rounds around the internet. And it's a part of Oakland, California, but it looks like Calcutta. Like it looks like a third world country with clothes hanging out on lines and just filth and, and vermin. It's Oakland, California. Okay. So guess what else is in Oakland, California? Well, leprosy and typhus, dark age diseases. They're making a comeback because of the horrible conditions there. So I don't I just I I'm it's beyond me how liberal democrats can let this go on why they're not cleaning these streets up because what if they're trying to sell the idea that liberalism and progressivism is what's great for America why don't they do their very best to make sure that the picture that's being put out there is of prosperity and what they call progressivism it it just shocks me to know in that this is the way they're having people living under their command and control. But why? Why are you shocked, Stacey? Why are you surprised when you look at inner cities in America over the past 40 years, 50 years, you see the same kind of degradation? That is part of what Dr. Williams and I discussed on Friday, that 
if you're living in a place that's controlled by Democrats, it's likely that it's not a very nice place. And so people will automatically, well, Austin's a nice place. Is it? Is it nice for the poor? Not rich people. It's nice for rich people wherever they go because they have money and they can make things nice. I'm talking about regular people. Is it nice for them? What about, um, well, you know, people in St. Louis? There are some beautiful areas of the city of St. Louis. I mean, you just would be stunned by the architectural beauty and these posh neighborhoods. Um, and then there are some like sub- suburban-esque neighborhoods in the city of St. Louis that are so beautiful and wonderful to live in. Clean, very little crime, neighborhood watch, wonderful. But I'm talking about where the poor people live. Is that wonderful or is it third worldish? And St. Louis isn't nearly as bad as a lot of these other places. Um, when I when you say Oakland, that's like a whole nother universe away from what people are dealing with in St. Louis. And there are bad conditions here, but I mean, Oakland just makes it look like a piece of cake. So I'm interested in seeing more of what, more improvement, more opportunity for Americans, more, more ways that we can take away the third world kind of living and replace it with the American ideal of hard work, um, sacrifice and success and meritocracy. It's not perfect, but it's the best you're going to get here on earth. So, all right, that's the show for today. Guess what? I'm going to be back here tomorrow. So, you have a fantastic evening. God bless you. And um, we'll see you then. <laughs>